I'm Heather Van Mullen. The title of this presentation is See It, Believe It, Do It, Using Imagery as a Mental Performance Enhancement Tool. Over the next few minutes, we'll spend some time together talking about mental performance enhancement and specifically using imagery as a strategy to help you be successful both on the court and off. We'll do so using a information sharing through a variety of slides. Additionally, at the end of the presentation, I'll share with you an example of an imagery script written by a student who integrated both video and audio in the hopes that maybe this might be an example you could consider as you decide how to structure your own script. The highly successful golfer Bobby Jones described mental performance enhancement well when he said, and I quote, competitive sports are played mainly on a five and a half inch court, the space between your ears. Perhaps one of the best examples of a strategy for mental performance enhancement that encapsulates that quotation is the concept of imagery. And the idea behind imagery is that you're essentially creating a picture in your mind of yourself being successful um, with a skill that, you're, that, you, that you wish to be successful with. And the idea behind it is that really you're creating a form of simulation. You're trying to uh, describe and create inside of your mind a real sensory experience what you see, how you feel, what you hear, but all of this is occurring in your mind and it's meant to help prepare you. It's another form of practice and it's meant to complement um, the actual physical practice that you're also engaged in. And the idea behind it really is that seeing is believing for so many people. I mean, have you ever said this quote? I'll believe that when I see it. Well, for so many people, there's a lot of power in, be able, in being able to create that image in your mind. And so really we're, we're using our memory, our mind, quote unquote, as taking a picture. Um, and the more vivid that picture is, the more effective imagery can be for a strategy. And the real key is we need to use the right kind of image at the right time. And there's all different ways that athletes might choose to use imagery. I mean, for example, and you can see from this list, they might choose to use it to learn new skills, or perhaps they want to correct a mistake. Um, and many athletes might choose to use it to aid in recovering from an injury. Again, if you can see yourself performing well, we're training our mind to help our body to be successful when we actually choose to physically engage in the activity. So strong keys to imagery. One, we need to be able to control and change the images we see and we use. And as I mentioned previously, the more vivid they are, the more impactful they are. So images need to be polysensory. We are talking about incorporating as many senses as possible to create the most vivid image possible to increase the effectiveness of this particular technique. So how does it feel? How does it smell? How might it taste? What does it sound like? What does it look like? And even so, how does it move? Or how do you feel while you're moving as you're engaged in this activity? So here's your first task, getting started with this concept. I want you to think of your favorite sporting implement. Perhaps it's a ball, it could be a glove, a specific pair of shoes, you get the idea. What's that one thing you feel best about? So as you, it, after you've identified your favorite implement, now I'm going to ask you to tap into your feelings about this particular implement. What is it about this particular thing that makes it your favorite? So if you've been an athlete for many years, right, you've probably played with lots of different basketballs or volleyballs or worn lots of different pairs of socks. But what is it about this specific pair of socks or pair of shoes or ball that makes it your favorite? And then I want you to ask yourself, what is your relationship to it? Why does this particular thing mean so much to you? After you take some time to answer that question or answer those series of questions, now I want you to take some time to describe that particular implement using as many senses as possible. Because again, as a reminder, we know that in order for imagery to be effective, it needs to be polysensory. We need to include as many different senses as possible to create the most vivid image we can. Here's another quote from a good golfer, Jack Nicklaus, the Golden Bear. He said, before every shot, I go to the movies inside my head. Here is what I see. 
First I see the ball where I want it to finish, nice and white and sitting up high on the bright green grass. Then I see the ball going there, its path and trajectory and even its behavior on landing. The next scene shows me making the kind of swing that will turn the previous image into reality. These home movies are key to my concentration and to my positive approach to every shot. So as you can see from his description there of how he uses imagery when he thinks about making golf shots, he's incorporated multiple senses, including the color of the ball, the color of the grass, this visualization of how the ball moves in space, and then again how it behaves when it interacts with other things like the ground. He is creating a movie. He is creating a rich, vivid picture of a golf shot. Some really important things to remember as you start to practice this skill. It's important, critically important to be positive. If we're always thinking about negative images or images we want to avoid, unfortunately what tends to happen is we start to imagine that which actually hurts our performance rather than helps us to perform well. So keep your images positive. As you start to think of images that help you to be successful, those images need to show you being successful in the motions that you're trying to imagine. All right, here's your first practice. I want you to think about putting yourself in a familiar place where you usually perform your sport. There's nobody there but you. Imagine that you're there. Imagine that you're standing in the middle of the place and you're doing a 360. You're looking all around you. It's quiet. There's no one else there but you. As you imagine this space, pick out as many details as you can. What does it smell like? What are the colors, shapes, or forms you see? Make note of the images that you can see in your mind. Once you've accomplished that, here's your next step for practice. Now, imagine yourself in the same setting, but this time there's tons of people there. Imagine you're getting ready per to perform. Try to think like you're seeing this from inside your own body. Can you see the spectators? How about your teammates or your coach or those you're getting ready to play? What kind of sounds do you hear? What's the crowd saying? How noisy are they? Uh, can you hear your teammates chattering or your coach yelling? Or are there particular sounds of your sport that help you to create this vivid, rich image in your mind? Once you've got this image in your mind, ask yourself, now how do you feel? After you've had time to practice, spend some time thinking about that favorite implement. Tap into those feelings. Get used to thinking about the types of words and phrases and descriptors you would use to create rich, vivid images. Then, once you feel comfortable with that, transition to talking about what it's, or to, to imagining what it's like to be in an empty stadium or venue. And then, add the people and add the noise. Once you feel comfortable and confident with being able to tap into your senses and to brainstorm and think about words that help to create a vivid image for you, your next step is to try to create an imagery script. And this is key. There's no cookie cutter script. What works for you probably won't work for your teammate because each script needs to be designed for the person as an individual. Other things to think about as you get ready to try to construct your own script. Usually, we're more relaxed at the end of a practice and tend to be more receptive to imagery at that time. So, when you're thinking about how you might use it or when you might use it, perhaps you want to think about a time when you're relaxed, when you can focus on the script itself. Another way to think about this is to use this as you prepare for a competition. Again, getting your mind into a situation or scenario where you can make your movie or you can create your image of yourself having success before you get ready to physically perform it. So what I'd like to show you for the next few minutes is an example of an imagery script. Steps across the grassy field. Feel that familiar weight of your athletic bag over one shoulder and the weight of your pole on the other. The heat in the sun warms your ever-ready muscles. You smell the familiar smells of spring, the heat of the black track. 
grass to make sure it smells from a large number of people around you. You see the familiar sights of other athletes warming up or socializing. You hear the impact of running feet on the track. All of the familiar sounds that come with the track. You set your equipment down and start your warm-up routine. It all feels so natural and enjoyable. The increased rate of your heart, the slight sweat on your brow, and the heat you feel increasing in your tone muscles. You feel ready. You are energized. You get your steps for the full ball. They are right on from yesterday. But it's the routine that matters. You are prepared. You are ready. You stay relaxed by doing some clips on the mats. As you make impact, you feel their warmth from the sun. You smell the musty smell from those rainy days being soaked up in the mats. You sink in. You feel so white and prime. You are ready to ball. The announcer calls your name. This is it. You have cleared every height up to this one. It is the state record. Things could not feel any better. Every ball before this has felt effortless. Every time you hit the mats, the crowd before. One more time. This is it. You step on the track and take a deep breath. You can smell the sweat that the tape on your bowl has soaked up. You feel that familiar grip, not too rough, not too smooth, but just right. The weight of the bowl feels like a feather as you raise it up. You take the first step back to prepare for your approach. The sound of the crowd is gone. You don't know if they're cheering or if they're silently waiting for your attempt. You don't care. All that you see is the runway, the mats. One last look at the bar before you forget its existence. You prime yourself. Take that deep breath, push. The approach is smooth. You gain speed as you cruise down the runway. The pole slowly drops, preparing for the plant. Gravity does all the work. All you do is guide the pole. It is weightless. The only focus is on your steps. One, two, three, four, five. You know that on seven, you're going to plant and drive. You're at full speed, you're flying. The steps are perfect, the plan is perfect. Your left arm stays strong, and your chest attempts to drive through the back of the bats. Your drive leg is strong, and you remain in contact with the track as long as possible before the tool you rely so heavily on takes over. You feel your left toes leave the ground. Now the fun comes. You rock back and reach your feet toward the sun. You only see the sun between your feet for a second, but the feeling of weightlessness and freedom lasts forever in that moment. You are completely upside down and feel all that energy you put into your pole start coursing back into your body. The pole turns as it unbends and pushes you in the air. This is it. The bar that you paid no attention to is all of a sudden right there. You pull, turn, and push. Your best friend gives its last kiss of energy to you and you release. First it's the legs and then it's the torso. You feel gravity welcome you back into her arms as your arms and head snap back. This is the moment, the moment where you've done everything, where you get to look up at that bar as you as steady on the standards as when you were staring it down on the runway. You fall, once again weightless, nothing matters anymore. As you hit the mats, their warmth envelops you, the familiar scents, sensations flood your senses. You lay back for that fraction of a second, seeing that bar in place. You did it. The sounds and sights of your surroundings flood back all at once as you jump up with your arms held high. The crowd roars, and you feel the soaring joy of having accomplished what you have worked so hard for. This moment, this win, this record, you have done it. You are a champion. So as you can see from the example you just viewed, um, this student athlete has done a wonderful job of incorporating as many senses as possible, as well as keywords, to help him visualize himself having a successful jump. Um, as you think about your own script, keep in mind if there is a song that, that means something to you, um, that helps you to feel prepared to be successful, but also particular images. You think If you reflect on this, the image choices that this young man used, he used pictures of a track, of the pole vault pit, of himself jumping. All of those things, again, help to create a vivid image in your mind, which helps you to write a script that you can use to enhance your mental performance and ultimately to help, your, help yourself to be successful with your chosen skill. Thanks for watching. If you have more questions or if you'd like to talk about imagery further, please feel free to email me. Again, my name is Heather Van Mullen 
and I can be reached at hivanmullen at lcse.edu. See it, believe it, do it. Good luck using imagery as a mental performance enhancement tool.